The fire chief here at Grace Creek 24 faces some serious charges. He's accused of hiding cameras inside the fire station. I put it up there back in November, December timeframe. We have the audio where he admits on tape that he did it. A man with a nearly 30 year history of traffic violations is now facing felony charges for hitting and killing a woman while driving under the influence. Coming up, why some people say that man shouldn't be out on the road. Expect tumbling temperatures tonight. Who could get down into the 40s and when to expect a big warm up this weekend? Right now at 7, a local fire chief accused of putting a camera in his fire station's vent appeared in court for the first time this afternoon. Grace Creek Volunteer Fire Chief Benjamin Marsh is facing felony charges in this case. New video shows Marsh leaving the courthouse today. Here you see it. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Ashley Rowe. I'm Dan Haggerty. This is a bit of a strange story. There's an audio recording obtained by WRL News where Marsh admits to placing the camera in that air vent. WRL Fayetteville reporter Gilbert Bays explains what else those recordings reveal. So we want to point out that there are two Grays Creek fire stations, Station 18 and the one right here. Station 24 is where the hidden camera was located. 41-year-old Benjamin Marsh stood in front of a judge today facing two felony charges. He's accused of hiding a miniature camera in the air duct inside the fire station's TV room. Marsh is heard acknowledging he placed it there on audio obtained by WREL. I guess at some point over the weekend, there was a camera found in the TV room that was up in there. The camera was mine. We're told the recording was made after the camera was discovered, and Marsh called firemen together to explain why he put it there. The reason I did it is because there was rumors going around, and I was trying to narrow down where the rumors were coming from so I could hit it off the pass. The fire chief says the camera didn't have the ability to record. He says he used a remote app to turn it on and off and listen. He says there was another more important reason for putting the camera in place. It was also to make sure the people that were in line or in my mind at that time to get promotions was not part of that problem because if I found out they were, they wouldn't have got promotions. Can you tell us Marsh didn't you make any comments as he made a quick exit from the Criminal County Detention Center where his first appearance was held. So the first appearance was extremely short. It lasted all the five minutes. Marsh will be back in court next month. In Cumberland County, Gilbert Pays, WRL News. We're told the president of the Cumberland County Fire Chiefs Association has called an emergency meeting because of this for Monday, and they'll decide if Marsh should stay on as chief pending the outcome of the case against him. One person was seriously injured in a shooting at a gun range in North Raleigh. It happened at On Point on Spring Forest Road near Capitol Boulevard. Multiple police officers were at the scene when the breaking news tracker arrived. Police tell us one person was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. They are not looking for a suspect. A heavy police presence this morning in a Raleigh, southeast Raleigh neighborhood. Within about 30 minutes of police showing up, they confirmed that it was in fact a swatting call that drove them there. Swatting is when someone tricks first responders into thinking that there is an emergency at someone else's house. The Sky 5 video you see here, you can see a woman come out of that home and talk to the officers. After the scene eventually cleared, WRL News, uh, News stopped by the house to find out some more, but the woman inside had no comment. Neighbors were a bit confused and some frustrated to see those resources used on a hoax. It's terrible, especially when it's like we have real emergencies out here. It diverts resources from those that need it, from potentially life-threatening and dangerous situations. All of those resources are being diverted from police, fire, EMS. So right now police say they are investigating to find out who is responsible for that call. New information tonight after a fire broke out in a townhome complex in Durham, displacing three people. Sky 5 flew over the scene on Lockridge Drive in Durham. Fire crews saw flames coming from the second floor when they arrived and quickly got the fire under control. Fortunately, no one was hurt. Investigators are trying to figure out what started the fire. Taking a live look now at North Hills on this beautiful Friday evening as we roll into the weekend. It'll be a bit of a shock to the system overnight. Temperatures dipping down into the 50s, even as low as the 40s in some places. It'll feel pretty nice, though, I think, for a lot of people. Meteorologist Kat Campbell is in the WRAL Severe Weather Center outside on the patio with when we will warm back up, Kat. 
It is going to be such a nice night. You can open up the windows, let some fresh air in. It is rare to see temperatures fall this low as we move ahead into June. Consider a light sweater tonight. You might want it. Temperatures fall to 44 in Roxborough. Roxborough woke up with a low of 45 this morning, 49 in Durham, 51 in Raleigh, 53 in Fayetteville. It'll be in the upper 40s though in Southern Pines and Rocky Mount. Pretty remarkable to start the month of June. Hour by hour, though, we're not going to see those low temperatures occur until around sunrise tomorrow morning. So if you're headed out and about tonight, you may want a light sweater, but you may be able to forego one. Temperatures are still going to be in the mid 60s around 10 o'clock. Tomorrow morning is when lows bottom out in the upper 40s to lower 50s, but 90 degrees. We've got several of them on our seven day forecast. I'll let you know when we warm back up coming up. Ken, is there a, is somebody a bride behind you? I saw somebody carrying someone else's dress. Yes, we have bridal photos happening in the WRAL gardens. I think her name is Michaela. And I mean, what a perfect weekend to get married. I'm jealous. I hope my wedding weekend, the weather is this nice, but I told her it's going to be great tomorrow. Oh, so great. Thanks, Kat. A man with a nearly 30 year history of neglecting the rules of the road is now facing charges for killing a woman while driving impaired. The man's name is William Oscar Braddy. Over the years, he's faced multiple DWI charges, reckless driving and speeding violations. WRL's Heidi Kirk spoke with some people who have concerns that this man could still be out on the road. Michael Cupper will never forget the day that he was hit head on here on Highway 258 in Scotland Neck, leaving him with months of recovery. Now, one year later, another woman has been hit and killed by the same man leaving Cupper wondering why that person still has a license. The list of charges in William Braddy's past is nearly too long to read off. We read some of them to Michael Cupper, the man he hit head on last September. Shouldn't have been on the road when he hit me. The only charges Braddy faced after hitting Cupper were for crossing the center line and having a fictitious identification. But his past is muddled with charges for drug use, reckless driving, and DWI. The latest charge, felony death by vehicle, when this woman was hit and killed just weeks ago. First thing I did, got on the phone and called my wife. And, uh, you know, we discussed that at length that, you know, it could have easily been the same outcome. Cooper isn't sure if Braddy was under the influence when he was hit, though this police report obtained by WRAL tells us he was suspected to be impaired, though he did not face charges for that. We reached out to the Scotland Neck Police Department where it happened to ask why and have not yet heard back. Do you believe that he was under the influence? Uh, definitely. We also asked the Edgecombe County District Attorney's Office why so many of his charges show dismissed. The DA's assistant told us some of the violations were corrected or dismissed when Braddy pled guilty to another charge. Legally, he can still be on the road. Heidi Kirk, WRL News, Scotland Neck. Bradley's currently, be, uh, Braddy, I should say, is currently being held in central prison with a $1 million bond. His next court date is in July. Nurses from across the triangle are pushing for tougher penalties for drunk drivers after one of their own was killed in a crash in Garner on Memorial Day. Susie Campbell died from the crash along with her husband and eight-year-old son. Police say an impaired driver ran a red light and slammed into their car on US 70. Campbell started her nursing career in the neuroscience unit at UNC Health. Her friends there are forming a group called Nurses Against Drunk Driving. They're calling on state lawmakers to require mandatory minimum sentences and stricter enforcement on drunk driving laws. I'm hoping it leads to change. So a change, a positive change, um, you know, where we can just be in, a, in our communities and not have to worry about um, someone driving under the influence um, and causing th this type of, of havoc. WRAL discovered the driver who's charged in the crash had a dozen traffic violations since 2015, including hit and run, speeding and reckless driving. The nurses are starting a letter writing campaign to state lawmakers and planning events to raise awareness about the consequences of impaired driving. Tyler Campbell was an avid runner. NC State Health and Exercise Studies professor Dr. Joy Cagendo is organizing a run to honor Tyler and his family. It's tomorrow morning at 8 at White Deer Park in Garner. So here we are nearly 24 hours after a jury found former President Donald Trump guilty of falsifying business records. 
Our nation now entering a new era. Today is the first full day of a presidential campaign involving a convicted felon. Former President Trump echoing some of what he said when he left the courthouse yesterday, that this hush money trial was, as he calls it, rigged and a political effort. We're dealing with a corrupt government. We have a corrupt country. Our elections are corrupt. Our borders are open. Our borders are going to be closed very soon. November 5th is going to be the most important day in the history of our country. And it's reckless. It's dangerous. It's irresponsible for anyone to say this was rigged just because they don't like the verdict. Our justice system has endured for nearly 250 years. And it literally is the cornerstone of America. Some online and out there in, in front, uh, protesting in places, calling for retribution. Uh, that began immediately after the verdict was announced. On some online forums, people are threatening violence even, or, or attempting to publicly identify the 12 New York jurors who who decided the president's fate here. Voters in our area say that, uh, that their opinion is largely unchanged for who they plan to vote for this fall, despite a WREO poll from March showing nearly 50% of unaffiliated voters would be less likely to vote for Trump if he were guilty. Most voters Friday say, though, the outcome didn't matter. They have their minds made up. I knew I wouldn't be voting for Trump. My vote is not gonna change. I, I knew this outcome was coming. Uh, I didn't think it was a particularly fair setting for Trump. The Republican National Committee says that nearly $35 million from nearly 500,000 donors have come in in just the last 24 hours. Still ahead, NC State researchers are getting a multi-million dollar boost to research the future of protein. How they're hoping to help find a sustainable way to feed the world. Plus, how the community is rallying around a six-year-old little girl fighting for her life. A Johnson County family looking for some support here. It's been a long battle to help their six-year-old daughter overcome a rare cancer. They're also attracting a lot of community support to help in the cause. The family relies on prayer and the skill of Duke physicians. This is exactly where six-year-old Noelle Franklin loves to be, on the porch swing with her brother Christian and her parents close by. Last May 4th, a surprise illness changed their lives. But prior to then, um, she, ha she was healthy. She had no other symptoms, no fevers, nothing. Noelle did develop a swollen bump on her left leg. Later, at Duke Health in Durham, a biopsy revealed bone cancer. It is osteosarcoma. Um, it has moved to both upper left and upper right lung, so it is considered stage four. That news hit the family hard, but they fought back, turning to pediatricians at Duke to save Noel. You know, Duke is kind of like world renowned. Um, we're blessed to, you know, be relatively close to Duke. Noel endured 10 weeks of chemotherapy to be followed by surgery with breaks at home and then more treatments and surgeries. Meanwhile, friends rallied to help the family. Social media and a GoFundMe campaign broadcast the call to save Noel. It caught the Franklins by surprise. You know, we're not anyone special. Uh, we're just a, a family living our daily life. And, you know, we were struck with the a tragedy, um, but sometimes with a tragedy, you know, comes miracles afterward. The family found that miracle in their daughter. The most encouraging thing is Noelle. Um, she's, she's pretty strong. She might be small, but she's definitely strong. She's probably our number one reason everything's going to be okay. Oh, she sure is showing a lot of might. There's a benefit in Clayton for the family this Saturday, June 1st at Tavern 42. It's going to feature vendors, auctions, and plenty of community support. Researchers at NC State will have a new facility to conduct research, to conduct research on the future of protein thanks to a big grant. The university is receiving a $30 million grant from the Bezos Earth Fund. It's for a new center of sustainable protein, a biomanufacturing hub for healthy and environmentally friendly protein, meaning meat that doesn't come directly from animals. NC State is one of a few universities invited to apply for funding, and it's the first to receive it. 
You can add another honor for former Duke men's basketball coach Mike Krzyzewski. Today, the state leaders uh, in our state here unveiling uh, and renaming part of the NC 751 and Cameron Boulevard as Coach K Highway. Coach K was presented at the replica of the sign there in Cameron, Cameron Indoor Stadium this afternoon. He said it's a reminder for his love of the city of Durham and its people. You know, we're a, a, a summation of the people who have had an influence on us. I've had great people in my life, starting with my mom, dad, and my brother. Hopefully when people come in to our community using uh, this part of the highway, it'll make our community better. And if you're driving that way, you can see the signs are already up on either end of Cameron Boulevard. So the weekend is upon us. Here we are. Uh, it's been just a beautiful start to this weekend. Meteorologist Kat Campbell joins us from the patio outside, and it is going to be a beauty over this uh, the next couple of days, Kat. I am so excited. We are finally breaking our rainy weekend stretch. You've got sunshine through the weekend. 40 degrees is our dew point right now. That is almost unheard of for this time of year. Just how dry and crisp the air feels. It's beautiful out here, and that's what makes it feel so good is this dew point. I know that that word may sound a little confusing, but it's the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. So the number, the lower the number is, the drier their air is, and it feels so comfortable outside today. June typically isn't this comfortable. The normal high at the beginning of June, 84, and by the end of June, 90 is the normal high. Normal lows are in the 60s. And average rainfall is just under four inches of rain. Don't forget hurricane season starts tomorrow, but no threats of anything like that on our seven day forecast. 84 is the high both tomorrow and Sunday, so we're actually right on par with our high temperatures for this time of year, but our low temperatures are going to be a little lower. Enjoy tomorrow. The humidity remains low tomorrow by Sunday, partly cloudy, a little bit more humid feeling Sunday and with a small chance for rain. So let's talk about why it's only a 20% chance Sunday for tomorrow. High pressure is right overhead and with that you've got sinking air. You've got sunshine. You've got the comfortable feel 10 out of 10 day. It doesn't get much better than that. But as we get into tomorrow night, high pressure moves offshore and since there's a clockwise wind around high pressure. We're going to be drawing in some warmer air and more moisture as we move into Sunday and next week. Sunday, it's not going to be full on summer humidity yet, but it's going to feel a little bit more humid compared to what we are seeing out there today and tomorrow. And with that south wind, we're also going to see more moisture move in. And so some showers and storms could develop in the North Carolina mountains Sunday, and we'll watch to see if some of those get here later Sunday evening and Sunday night. If they're able to hold together, uh, then they may be able to hold together and make it here Sunday evening. But it's a small chance I wouldn't cancel any outdoor plans. Carolina Beach looking nice. They've seen a bit more cloud cover the coast today, but no rain or anything like that. It's been a nice day out there for anybody headed to the beach. The rip current forecast today was low for the southern beaches, medium for some of the outer banks. We expect a similar forecast for tomorrow. Always pay close attention to the flags, though. Sometimes they can change them quickly and beach by beach. So always a good idea to review rip current safety with your family, especially early in the season when you're heading to the beach. Tomorrow's beach forecast looks great. Upper 70s for most of our beaches tomorrow. And then on Sunday, we're in the low to mid 80s. It's going to be even warmer at the coast, and I don't expect any of those showers from the mountains to really make it to the coast on Sunday. 84 for the high this weekend. Next week, we're up to 90 Monday. Tuesday and Thursday. The best chances for rain look like they come Wednesday and Thursday of next week. It's looking more like summertime storms, though, so I'm not thinking everybody's going to see rain next week, but we'll at least have the chance. And by then, you know, your gardens, your grass, you may need a little rain. Back to normal. Thank you, Kat. You know, it's a beautiful evening as well uh, in Wrightsville Beach, where you are looking live. Oh, it'd be so nice to be out on the That's water, nice. wouldn't it? The next time you visit the coastal city, you might spot a wintry downtown Wilmington scene. Hmm. A look at the movie filming underway coming up. Today, the trio of historic stone houses at Dix Park officially debuted after a 16 month renovation. A ribbon cutting this morning marked 100 years since their original construction. The buildings have been transformed thanks to a $5 million gift from the State Employees Credit Union and its foundation. The Gatekeeper's Cottage is now a welcome center with a historic display. The superintendent's house will serve as the Dix Park Conservancy's offices and meeting space, and the physician's house will offer office space for City of Raleigh volunteer services and host artists and residents.
And we hope that uh, people will utilize this space, particularly on weekends. We'll have hours opening with maps, guides, uh, the history, and so more people can find out just how much you know happened on this 300 acres. The stone houses and the new features will open to the public starting tomorrow. North Carolina's new and reimagined Sullenberger Aviation Museum will open tomorrow after years of renovations. Retired Captain Sully Sullenberger visited Charlotte this week to get a preview of it. The museum is named for the heroic pilot who landed his disabled plane on the Hudson River in New York in January of 2009. All 155 people on board survived that. A terrifying moment. The flight was en route to Charlotte. The museum is near Charlotte Douglas International Airport. Looks cool. Get ready for some authentic Greek food, music, and shopping without leaving the Triangle. The Raleigh Greek Festival kicked off today, runs through Sunday. It's at the Jim Graham Building of the North Carolina State Fairgrounds in Raleigh. You'll be able to enjoy authentic Greek food prepared by the Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Church. A portion of ticket sales will be donated to Habitat for Humanity and Team Rubicon. The Durham Brick Convention is happening Saturday and Sunday at the Durham Convention Center. This is fun. So the event is the first Lego convention to come to the Bull City. It will include vendors and displays from local creators. Uh, and you can also visit some of the stars from Fox's Brick Masters. Tickets are $15 for each day. Now, I know it's gorgeous outside, but there's some snow on the coast. Parts of downtown Wilmington were covered with the fake snow for a new movie. It's called Merv and stars actress Zoe Deschanel. The film is described as romantic comedy. Last month, the crew filmed on Curry Beach. Merv. What do you think Merv's about? I know. It's a... It'll be cute. It'll be funny. I like Zoe Deschanel. She She's... is funny. Yeah. We'll have to check out the rest of the so cast. It's a winter, winter theme. A little winter thing? Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks for being with us tonight. We appreciate it. Our next newscast is at 10 on Fox 50 and 11 on WRAL. Have a great weekend. watching WRAL News over the air channel 34 and Spectrum channel 1257.